Today is July 17th, 2012. I'm Russ Roberts of Stanford University's Hoover Institution, and I am speaking with John Taylor, also of the Hoover Institution and the Department of Economics here at Stanford. And we're going to be talking today about the recovery and uh, prospects for the future of the U.S. economy. Now, in past recessions, uh, there's been a relationship between the depth of the recession and the briskness of the recovery. The 91 and 2000 recessions were, were mild and had slow recoveries. The deeper recessions of the past were deep and had brisk recoveries. This is deep with a, with a slow recovery. So let's talk about the potential GDP gap, as it's often called. John, tell us, what is potential GDP? How is that measured? It's measured to be the trend in the economy. Long-term economic growth uh, tries to measure what our potential is. Sometimes you're above it, uh, sometimes you're below it. It's kind of an average growth rate over time. And it's measured in different ways, sometimes just by extrapolation of a trend. That's the simplest way. Sometimes trying to use an estimate of the supply side of the economy, the amount of capital, the amount of labor available. A number of ways to do it. So looking at the picture here, um what we see is that the, according to the NBER dating, I think the recession began officially in the fourth, fourth quarter, quarter of 2007. 2007, which is this little peak. We had yeah. a bump up, yeah, which turned out not to be um, long lived. Right. They mark the NBER marks it as the fourth quarter of 2007, and frequently you have little movements like that within a recession when you're coming down. But you can see pretty clearly that's about when it began. So. That's, that's, I'm perfectly happy with that as a measure. And as you look at this chart, you know, potential GDP there is, that's that trend line I was referring to. From the past? This is estimated by the Congressional Budget Office. Okay. And it's not a constant trend. It, it, sometimes it speeds up, sometimes it slows down. And in this period, you probably can see a little teeny slowdown. Yeah. And uh, that's, that's really because CBO is recognizing that labor force growth is going to be a little lower in the, in the future. Uh, there's recognition of productivity in there, but it's a very slight move, but you can see it's, it looks like it's slowing down around 2009 or so, but very small. And, and that's really the economy's potential, as estimated by CBO, and there's other estimates. It's not uh, the most precise estimate, but I think that's a pretty reasonable one. And then the economy, again, measured by real GDP, bottoms out, and the recovery begins in really summer of 2009. Yes. You can see that it picks up, you see it in the third quarter, kind of the bottom is the second quarter of 2009. And it then never catches back up. You can it, see it's sort of just growing at the same rate as potential GDP, so the gap is still being maintained. Which would seem to be, might be what you'd expect. The economy slumps and then it gets back on track. But it's different from past recessions, right? So if we look at the 1981 recession, which is in, uh, in this mm -hmm. chart. Right. Describe what happened there and what's different. Well, that was a very serious uh, recession, too. It was actually back-to-back -back recessions. It was 80 and through 81 and 82. And uh, we had a um, long period of uh, unemployment rising. It got up to actually 10.8% in this period. So it was a very deep, serious recession. And I think the most important thing to notice in this second chart is how real GDP grew more rapidly than potential GDP. During that recovery period from the trough? During the recovery period. Recovery began in the fourth quarter of, of 1982, as you can see, and the gap was closed. And so that's actually the typical recovery, and especially from deep recessions. And it's, it's such a marked contrast to the performance we've had recently. I'm just struck by how relatively shallow the 81 recession is relative to 2007, even though the 81 recession in employment terms was, was a little bit worse, actually, because, yeah. as you said, unemployment hit 10.8%. I think if you look What's at going kind on of the size of the gap at the, at the bottom there, it's comparable. You know, the difference between the red line and the blue line, mm -hmm. the difference between potential GDP and real GDP in percentage terms, it's pretty close, and so that's really what you want to look at at that point. That's why the unemployment rate is about the same. Mm -hmm. So if we think about this gap, and I, I have to confess my, um, my Hayekian side makes me a little bit uneasy with potential GDP, because what that's suggesting is that there is a correct or potential level of GDP if everything worked great. And, but of course, 
that trend, which is what it's based on, could have been an exaggerated period of growth because of distortions of various kinds. Is there, how should we think about that gap? Well, it's what we've observed in the past. And you're quite right to say potential GDP is difficult to estimate. Uh, it's a, we think of it as dependent on the capital we have available, labor force available, productivity that's there and growing. And that's why I think it's important to recognize there's other measures here besides potential GDP. But I think the, the idea that we return uh, to some trend is occurred so often in the past is important to note it's not happening now. And, uh, and also do recognize that you may be wrong on the trend. And it's, you know, it's nothing, some, it's not, the story should not depend completely on an estimate of potential GDP. That's why I think it's important to look at other things. But, you know, you can go back way back in history and see the same returning to some uh, trend, basically. But, but again, it's not the most important thing. It's just that this is an unusual recovery. For you uh, history fans out there, here's the uh, 1907 uh, recession. So we see an enormous drop uh, over that year from uh, 07 to the beginning of 08, and then a very steep recovery. Well, I, it was yes, also called V-shaped. Yeah, this is, this is a classic V-shape, uh, panic in 1907, and we're coming back rapidly. And actually, this is a good case to go back to your other question, Russ. The, it really doesn't matter what your potential GDP estimate is, you can see a sharp recovery here. You know, yeah. draw it wherever you want, and the story is going to be pretty, pretty much the same. And that's just a trend line, but you can see you got back past the previous peak very rapidly. Um, and uh, that's, that's this sharp recovery that uh, we usually have. And we've got one more recession uh, to look at, which uh, actually this is often called a depression. Yes, this is In a bad my time. Modest study of this period. It's the 1894 uh, depression. This is a very, very bad time. And again, partly you can see the the, snow, the sharp back towards normal, if you like. But also, one thing about this chart is because uh, you're only looking at one downturn and upturn. There's another recession that follows this, mm -hmm. uh, and I think that's why people recur to, refer to this period as almost a, like a depression because you. You fell back into a recession soon after this little chart here, but, but for the from the point of view of talking about sharp recoveries from deep recessions, this I think illustrates the fact that it's the typical case. And we don't have the data in front of us, but uh, my memory of the 1920 recession, which was the predecessor to the Great Depression, the 1920 recession was very steep, and again the recovery was very brisk. Absolutely. Again, it's really what always happens, except for this recent one. You could, we could go through and look at many others, but this gives you the point, I think. And I think Milton Friedman, uh, you've uncovered a, a working paper he wrote a while <laughs> well, back. Well, Milton Friedman wrote in uh, originally about the time, um, in 1982, I believe, uh, something called the plucking model. Uh -huh. The plucking model tried to capture this idea you'd snap back. You pluck a string in a guitar, you pull it down, and it snaps back. And the further you pull it, down, pull it down, the faster more it pulls, pulls back yeah. up, at least that's what it seems like. And so he called it the plucking model and thought that was a characteristic of the U.S. economy, and he studied it. And, uh, and I guess what we've seen uh, in some of the recessions since then, it, the plucking model continued, except now, this most recent one, it's, it's the aberration. Okay, so we've talked about the gap between uh, potential GDP and real GDP. Let's, uh, what are some other ways we might take a look at this recovery? Well, I think growth rates are a way that gets around this difficulty of measuring potential GDP. And uh, this chart here is a bar chart, shows you the growth rate of real GDP in the recent recovery, started in the third quarter of 2009, with the recovery from 81-82. And the, the red lines are the most recent recovery, and you can see um, quarters since the end of the recession, and so starts out, hardly gets to 4%. In fact, doesn't even get to 4%. Never tops 4. You look at red, and then it dips down again, and then it's up again, but it's basically very low, and now it's down around 2%, may even be lower than that when we look at the next quarter. And we're at risk of a double dip, some People are suggesting. People talking about a double dip, yeah. The blue line is, is the uh, recovery from 81, 82, and it's dramatically different. You can see you get 
growth over 8% there at the beginning, and it sort of it comes down as you get back to normal as the recovery moves into the general expansion. But just throughout this whole period, growth is much, much more rapid. So in, in a sense, this is almost a better depiction of, uh, of what's going on. Th there's also a, a third way to think about this recovery in, compared to the past, and that's employment. We're, we're partly because growth has been so slow, or we haven't closed the gap, uh, employment has been very weak. Perhaps the best measure of that is what fraction of the working age population is working. And Which so, shouldn't change that much in a short period of time for reasons other than the state of the economy. Through short periods of time, absolutely. Through long periods of time, of course, it does. Changes in culture, women exactly join the right. workforce in greater numbers, all kinds of reasons. Exactly. Teenagers stop working early right. in the 20th century, et cetera. Exactly. So if you want to just look at this chart that sort of helps you understand this, so it's pretty straightforward. This is now the months since the recession ended. That's on the horizontal axis. So we have about three years there, 36 months. And the vertical axis measures the change in the fraction of the labor force, of the working age population, excuse me, that is working. And you see it's actually lower now. It came down. It's just basically flat. It's flat. And, this, and, it's, and it's, it's extraordinarily strong. Employment record back in 82, 83, 84. So then the question becomes, of course, what's different about this, this recovery? Why is it so mediocre?